Hello. So, um, can you kind of talk about how you make the decision of what to pull from the comic versus what to add of your own stuff and how you kind of, I guess, decided to spread it across two seasons into three, like how you kind of just balance that? I mean, I, it's not a super didactic process. It's a much more intuitive one. Meredith and I obviously have read the comics multiple times and have digested this rich and wonderful world that Joe and Gabrielle have created. And then we are telling our story and we know that there are certain things that we both loved in the comic books and we wanna see those things at various points, but how and when that happens, it's kind of more organic how that unfolds. We're just telling our story and then we'll be like, oh, this would be a great place to introduce that key or, or this key, or maybe we'll make up a new key here. Or, you know, this particular character turn would be, you know, really fun in the context of this other thing that we're doing that we've invented. So it's, 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 it's not, it's something that's kind of organically evolved as we just make the episodes and as we think about what we're going to do next. And, um, just to reiterate, as Meredith said, the, the collaboration with Joe and Gabriel has been great and they've been incredibly um, generous in allowing us to make the show its own thing and have you know, collaborated and participated with us in this new iteration of that story. If someone were to use the head key on both of you, what would the inside of your mind look like the way the memories were stored and everything? What, what would we find? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like if you're a writer, you're, you know, your, your brain is, um, uh, my, my favorite quote is David Milch used to say, my brain is a dangerous playground. Uh, and <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't really want to use the head key on myself. I'm not, I'm not really kind of at that particular point of like self, uh, reflection right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it would be, I'm, I'm, I'm good staying locked out. I think, I think mine would look like an anthropology that's been designed by Tim Burton. That's what I see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Has there been anything from the comics that you've wanted to put in adapt that you haven't been able to either for horror elements or maybe just you can't do it on television, something like that? Um, I don't feel like we, I don't think we feel like we missed anything. I, I think that uh, certainly in season two and season three, you know, the stuff that we really liked and respond to in the comics that fit into the way our story was unfolding, we stuck it in there, right? There's nothing that, I mean, the comics are their own thing and they're fantastic, but, you know, I think that we, we've utilized them for our storytelling. I, 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 do you feel like we're missing anything, Meredith? No, I mean, there were some keys that we like actively felt worked better um, at, in the comic than, and wouldn't have maybe translated as well to the screen that we, um, you know, deliberately felt like that's a key that we probably are not going to introduce because the way that it translates better in the comic than on screen. Um, and then there were elements like with the head key that we obviously adapted in the comic when you put the head, when you put the key in someone's neck, they're literally the top of their head, like a lid comes off, which in the comic what makes for like this incredible splash panel, but to translate that for TV, you know, would be a bit grotesque. Um, you could do it, uh, but we, you know, chose to kind of find our own way to do that. But in terms of the stories of the comics, you know, I feel like we've mined, we're mining and continue to mine in season three, the, the stories that we, we, we really love and responded to. Thank you.